Hey, hey, it's a good day. How y'all doing out there, Detroit? Hello, Highland Park. Hello, Atlanta, Georgia. And all the way to Japan. How you doing? Now, you know, I always say it's a good day. But I am today saying, what us going to do? Because it is such a mess going on, not only in Detroit, but all our surrounding areas and all across the United States. And a young man that I put on Facebook today and told you about the young man that cares about you and saying Facebook, hello, Facebook, too, uh, who cares about you and cares about those that don't care about doing anything and making sure that things get done for our people. I'm excited to have with me all the time Pastor Bullock, I started to say Raymond, and it's not <laughs> Pastor Alexander Bullock. How you doing? I'm doing great, Reverend Orthea Barnes. Good to see you. Good to see you. It's good to be seen, as the old folks say, and, and not, not you. <laughs> I hear you. I hear you. What else gonna do? Well, we got to organize. We got to fight back. Uh, we are under attack around the nation mm -hmm. uh, in Pennsylvania. You know, they're trying to rig the Electoral College in Alabama. They're trying. Uh, to make the Voting Rights Act Section 5 null and void. In Michigan, we got emergency managers. Uh, we're just seeing so that much. That we didn't vote for? That we did not vote and for. And that's, that's, that's one of the things I want to ask you about, too, is that how can somebody run for office right now and we can't even vote? Well, the bottom line is. Or we is, may not be able to vote. Let's say that. Well, the bottom line is this. We voted no on Prop 1. They told us they didn't care about our vote. They put the emergency manager in anyway, anyway in the mm -hmm. lame duck. Now Kevin Orr is here. On tomorrow at City Council, I want folks to come down to City Council, Coleman and Young Municipal Building. What time? 10 a.m. Okay. They will be voting on a contract for Jones Day Law Firm, which is the law firm Kevin Orr worked for, mm -hmm. that's going to come in and help with the restructuring of the city of Detroit, so we're told. But I want you to know, if you're watching and listening, there are over seven or more law firms or consultants that have been hired by the city of Detroit at this point to the mm. tune of about $17 million this year. Oh, my. So now, remember, we're supposed to be cash-strapped. We're supposed to right, not have any money. Hire all but we people. can hire all these lawyers to come in Hello. and uh, and and restructure the debt. And so we've been calling on city council to not approve the contract. Don't approve the contract. Right. Make Kevin Orr do his job, mm -hmm. all right, and stand up for the people. As I go around the city of Detroit, you know I'm running for city council. Yes, yes, uh, yes, in, yes. In yes. Detroit, the primaries in August, we need your support. And let me let me give the number here because I know y'all always got questions for Pastor Bullock. 313-868-4336. 313-868-4336. Give us a call. That's go right. Ahead. You know, I'm running for city council, and mm -hmm. as I go around the city, and talk to people, one thing they keep saying is, how come our elected officials are not fighting back? You know, where are our community mm -hmm. leaders? How come they just open up the door it's and roll over? And, and, roll over? And, mm -hmm. and so we need new, strong, courageous leadership. Not going to always be popular, not perfect, not going to always be right. right. But we can going to stand up and fight back. You say, what do we do? We've got to let them know that our voices and our vote counts. And so this is not only about this year in the city of Detroit. It's about 2014, Governor Rick Snyder. Must be a one-term out. out. Must be a one-term <laughs> nerd, as they Hello. say. Hello, right? out. We've got to shut the door on his policies. That's we need a right. referendum on emergency management. Management. The best way to do that is to make sure he's a one-term governor. And you know, it's unfortunate though that even some of our friends, who we thought would be our allies, Hello. have turned their backs against uh -huh. us and have basically left the citizens in the city of Detroit, Flint, Benton Harbor, you know, to 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 ourselves. We've been abandoned, so to speak, but that's all right. If the cavalry won't come, 
then we know we had to stand up and be our own cavalry. That's it. That's it. And, you know, I told them today that they need to join us in the effort. And I see where you talked about earlier about partnering and gathering together. And one of the things that you have done is that you push his, his join uh, action network, right? That's right. In, in terms of partnering. That's right. We're working with everybody we can work with. Mm-hmm. Uh, Rainbow Push. Uh, and, and, and I'm happy to announce that Rainbow Push has a new leadership now. Uh, under, okay. under Mr. John Graves and Reverend Jim Holly, uh, given leadership there because I'm a candidate for city council. And okay, so, so you had to step and so, down. And from so there. I had to I had to move aside, uh, and so now uh, we're focusing on our city council race. But Reverend Charles Williams working well with the National Action mm-hmm. Network, and then there's a new organization called the Change Agent Consortium. Uh, Reverend Maurice Rudds, who's a good friend of mine, we planted this seed about six months ago, and so he's jumped out there. It's a great community group that's organizing, uh, and I'm one of the visionaries uh, of, of that organization. But Reverend Pastor Maurice Rudd, so you got Change Agent Consortium, you got NAN, you got Rainbow, uh, mm-hmm. and, and everybody. And do coming we have together. any young people? Well, that's why, that's why I like Reverend Rudd's okay. because Reverend Rudd's and the Change Agent Consortium is a mm-hmm. new generation of leadership okay. where, with young pastors and leaders are coming together um, with seniors who've been on the battlefield a mm-hmm. long time. That's but, a smart move. Yeah, so to bring it together because, um, you know, those who've been in the fight for a long time need to connect with those who, who have just got in the fight mm-hmm. so, that, so that we can have some strong young foot soldiers right. to continue to carry this right. forward. And so I'm excited about the Change Agent Consortium and Pastor Rudd's leadership in the city of Detroit. You can find them on Facebook at Change Agent Consortium, Change Agent Consortium. Mm-hmm. Uh, they have a meeting, uh, which we are a part of every week on Tuesdays at 11 o'clock at the Bethany Baptist Church. Uh, mm-hmm. You can come to those meetings and find them on Facebook. But you'll be hearing more about them uh, as as this kind of new wave of leadership is coming on. But we are also thankful for the Rainbows and the Nans and, and the NAAs and the mm-hmm. Urban Leagues and everybody all of them. Joining together. But we need everybody to stand up. We, too many dinners. Too many Hello. press conferences. And too many people thinking that I can't do anything. My voice don't count. You know, and then a lot of people are discouraged. Well, don't be in discouraged. In terms of, well, my vote didn't count, so what am I going to do now? I don't mean, I've heard from young people to older people say that. Well, forward ever, backward never. We must remember <laughs> Fannie Lou Hamer, Mississippi Freedom Democratic Party. She was disenfranchised. Mm-hmm. Took her to jail, beat her up. She How was many times? So many times. But she mm-hmm. said, I'm sick and tired of being sick and tired. Right. I'm not going to let them make me give up on my power. I'm not going to give them the power. Right. I have the power. And so for those who are feeling depressed, saying, well, my vote doesn't count, they took our vote, we must let them know that they haven't taken our power. And a referendum on Governor Snyder in 2014 will speak volumes around the nation. Mm -hmm. Large voter turnout this year in the city of Detroit will let them know that we are getting ready to be organized and mobilized. And that's why we're running and moving around the city to lift people's spirits, to let people know that the battle is not ours, it's God. The race is not given to the swift or to the strong. And but don't to those fooled, who endure to the end. Don't be fooled at all because many people are fooled by, you know, thinking, well, he's got all this power now and he's doing this. He really don't. We have more power than he does. If we join together as a one, it'll be even greater. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's well, the biggie. What's coming up that they might be able, those that are listening, that may be able to join in the effort? Well, well, number one, I think tomorrow is a, a very, very key moment okay. at the Coleman A. Young Municipal Building mm-hmm. at 10 a.m. It's just so important for us to be there to make sure that these unscrupulous gangster politics do not go forward. The the law firm they don't keep slapping us that face. Kevin Orr worked for is now going to be the law firm that gets a contract with the city of Detroit. This same law firm represents. So all the things that that was wrong with him is just negated. Doesn't make any difference, huh? Well, because he couldn't even take care of his own business. Well, he well he had some personal issues with tax liens on right. his home, but there's an even bigger issue here, Reverend. Oh yeah. And that issue is that Jones Day Law Firm represents Bank of America Merrill Lynch. Oh my my. Which are the creditors for the city of Detroit. Okay. So how can you represent the city of it's Detroit? A conflict of interest. Come on, see, I, that's what I'm saying. It just makes sense. Doesn't it? See, as soon as I said it, you just you already light. It, it, the light came off. So how can you represent the city of Detroit right. to the tune of seven million dollars over four or five months, 
and represent Bank of America Merrill Lynch, mm -hmm. right? And and they are our creditors. That seems like a conflict of interest to me. And right. so we must we must be there tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. to let the city council know, don't approve this contract. This is a conflict of interest. We know what's going on. This is about protecting uh, the the insurance companies that have that have bondholders insurance. Because even if the city of Detroit goes into bankruptcy, the bondholders will still get paid. But the insurance companies that Whoa. have the insurance on the bonds would have to pay out. Wow. And so and so and so what we're saying is that don't approve this contract. We must watch every action by the emergency manager. If the city council rubber stamps Kevin Orr's behavior. Right. Then they will effectively take our opportunity to have a legal challenge of this behavior off mm -hmm. the table. And we want city council to stand with us. They should not be a part of the problem. They should be a part of the solution. Right. Right. So then at 10 o'clock in the morning, we're going to be down at the Coleman A. Young building on what floor is it going to be on the 13th floor? On 13th floor. That's right. In meet the us chamber? In city council chamber. OK. Meet us there at 10 a.m. Get your green card for public comment. Write your name on that card, and when they call your name, you're going to have 30 seconds. Tell them, just, just say conflict of interest and be quiet. That's all you got to say. <laughs> Don't approve the contract. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. We need, we need exactly hundreds, to the point. hundreds of Detroiters. Because you know what they're saying? They're saying it's just a small band. It's just five or seven of us no, who are no, against no, the no. emergency manager. They need to know. You know, when I saw those stats in the Michigan Chronicle yes. saying that we agreed and many people agreed to having this financial manager, I said, okay, where y'all get y'all stats from? Well, we all know that the Michigan Chronicle is a Republican newspaper. And so uh, we mm -hmm. know where they got their stats from. The Detroit News. I know Sam used to be a Republican that's right, and, so and, therefore, and, the, and the leadership is still Republican. Okay, and they and 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 we know these folks, and 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 they are personal friends, but we have to, but we have to call it like it is. Mm -hmm. There's always an agenda when you're dealing with media. We saw the Detroit News poll that said 52 percent of Detroiters were against emergency management. Right, right, and so you have to be careful with these polls. The mm -hmm. fact of the matter is, is that when we talk to people around the city. They are all saying no, no to no, emergency no. management, but we and need we you. voted and said no. We voted and said no across Hello. the state of Michigan, right? <laughs> right? Over a million people said no. So come down tomorrow. It's a pivotal moment at 10 a.m. to the Coleman and Young Municipal Building, and say no, right? We all want Detroit to come back, but 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 we want Detroit to come back not uh, at any cost. Well, we don't want it to come back and cut us out. Right. We don't want it to come back and we get left out. Mm -hmm. Right. That big G word, gentrification. Right? Hello. We, we want to have an opportunity for everybody <laughs> to benefit from the comeback of Detroit. Don't bring Detroit back and take our water. Right. Bring Detroit back and take Belle Isle. Bring so Detroit back and privatize transportation. What happened? Where can you, or what, even if this matters, yes. where did this thing start from? Where did it stem from? You mean the emergency, In terms the financial of, crisis? Or? Of giving our city away because it didn't just happen. Well, this has been a 50 year financial decline mm -hmm. uh michigan was a one industry state automotive industry detroit uh, obviously put the world on wheels and right. also wrote the soundtrack uh through motown. motown you were part of that right oh, singing yeah. that soundtrack uh and, but 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 as time progressed we did not make certain strategic changes to to build other economic uh, systems in the city of detroit in the state of michigan or make people responsible or make people responsible and so and so we've been headed this way. But but having said that, this this new move mm -hmm. to 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 bring in emergency managers is really a move to privatize government. Right. If, if you'll notice, right, big, they've already privatized the EMS. They privatize EMS. They're privatizing transportation. Most of the agencies that were under the city of Detroit's control had mm -hmm. been privatized, like health and human services, mm -hmm. workforce development. Right. And whenever you see privatization, you know, some private company is making money off of public dollars. Right. And so this is really what we call disaster capitalism where corporations come in and then pri you, they privatize public services but get paid off of the taxpayer dollars. And so you'll see that the water department will be taken from the city of Detroit. They'll incorporate now it they under got another the, name. the sanitation department. They're getting ready to only collect garbage twice a month. They, that's right. Help me understand that somebody. That's right. Only twice a month. And you'll begin to see that it's going to be under private management. And oh, so, yeah. And so this is a power grab. This is about dollars. Uh, being acquired taxpayer dollars. I have to say it again. Mm -hmm. These are our taxpayer dollars, mm -hmm. right? Being given over to private companies 
because they get the contract. So as right. you see with Jones Day tomorrow, they, they are going to get paid by the city of Detroit. Right, our taxpayer dollars just for showing up, just <laughs> just for reading reports. We don't even know what Hello. they're doing. We don't even know what they're doing. Right, right, and right. They, and then they're gonna cut city council's pay. They're gonna cut their staff, so there won't be any I oversight. I think they already cut their staff, didn't they? They haven't cut it yet. Oh, okay. But they're having a conversation about it because, of course, this is budget week. Okay. For the city of Detroit. All right. And so that seven million dollars that they want to take from city council is gonna go to Jones Day Law Firm. And so the citizens mm. in the city of Detroit need to understand. If you saw the movie RoboCop. I don't yeah. know if folks saw RoboCop. You oh, yeah. watch RoboCop, the first one. There was old Detroit and new Detroit. Mm -hmm. And there was a wall around new Detroit. New Detroit was run by the private corporation. And old Detroit was just the people living out there in the community. Mm. And they, they had no services and there was crime. And RoboCop was the robotic police officer that was sent out into old Detroit. People should watch that because that vision of that movie is coming to pass. We have Midtown okay. and Downtown. Right. Right. New Detroit. And everything is happening for Midtown. Right. But then when it gets into Detroit, nothing. So it's that same vision of mm -hmm. investment coming to Midtown and Downtown. Midtown and Downtown is becoming wealthier. It's becoming more diverse. It's becoming less African-American. Mm -hmm. You got council by district, so they can actually control their districts now. And then the rest of the city of Detroit is just being left. And they, they, and, and they even have a Detroit strategic framework plan where they're going to be putting parks where people live. Right. So so yeah. so so they've already got a plan to move us out. Right. And to move assets you know, and resources. Irma Henderson in. was my was my godmother. OK. And mother talked about, honey, there's a design plan to move y'all out of here and for them to come back in. How dare y'all Negroes be on the water? Have the water. We're going to get all of that. We're going to come in and they have to show where they were the saviors. They came in to save us. They can't. They come in. That's, to save that's us. their that's mentality, right. though. That's what Snyder is thinking in his little pea brain well i think it's about money i mean I don't, oh it's definitely I, I, about money you know, they but, go come in and save detroit money is 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 the key but also being in charge over us is bigger well that's for that's, them I, you know what i would i would agree with you because what they'll mm -hmm. say is y'all had it they right couldn't do nothing they with didn't it. do nothing with right? it right and now we're gonna come back and make but it you something. know what a lot of us black folks are saying that well y'all had it y'all couldn't do nothing with it so let's give it to this man over here because he can do different because he's a different color than what we've always had. Well, you Help know, me understand well, you that, know, somebody. You know what, Uncle, Uncle A man Mr. is a man. I don't care if you black, white, blue, purple, polka dot. Mr. Charlie's ice has always been colder. <laughs> we know that. It don't melt. It doesn't melt. Mr. <laughs> Charlie ice don't melt. You know, and one, right. of the, one, of the, one of the things that the civil rights movement uh, one of the, the negative legacies of that movement mm -hmm. is that we were so quick to integrate that we left our own institutions, mm -hmm. our own businesses, mm -hmm. our own schools. Right? right. The only thing we have now are these churches. And a lot of these churches are closing and decaying and bending over and falling apart. Schools closing. Right? The schools are closed. HBCUs As are closed. As a matter of fact, uh, Mikado, what is her name? Uh, state rep. Mikado, Black girl, I can't say her name. Mm -hmm. She sings at uh, Bishop Ellis's church all the time. She's a member over there. Okay, and she sent me a thing showing me where their Snyder's getting ready to mess with the educational system again. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you've got the EAA, right? Where they're taking the lowest performing schools and putting them into a new statewide district and experimenting with children, putting children who have behavioral problems in front of computers. They can't sit still. They're not learning. Uh, it's a disaster. It reminds me of the Tuskegee experiment where the federal government experimented mm -hmm. on folks in Tuskegee. They're always experimenting mm -hmm. on us. You know what? And, and I think at a certain point we've got to get fed up. That's you true. know, we got to be we got to get tired of this. Yes. You know, we got to stop apologizing. Well, you know, we didn't do the best we could do. You uh. know, so maybe it's our fault. We the only uh -uh. people. We are the only people. That will not defend ourselves. Right. We are the only people that will that will not stand up for ourselves. Every other ethnic group, they stand up for themselves. Right, wrong, or indifferent. And America is about groups having power and resources mm -hmm. so they can take care of their children. That's why and they don't want the unions. That's why they don't want the unions. That's why black businesses uh, are, are not growing in the city of Detroit. We got 90,000 black businesses. we have any black businesses? We have 90,000 black businesses in southeastern Michigan. With and they all have an employee of one. Oh my goodness! Get yeah. out of here. Yeah. So, <laughs> so you have well, ninety thousand black me, businesses me, with me, ninety thousand employees. That question: Do we have any black-owned businesses downtown? 
Well, uh, <laughs> I don't know if we have any downtown. We used to. We used to. Uh, what's his name um, that just died? Well, we know Burt's is downtown, but the man that had the— we, well, Tony Stovall Barton, is downtown. Barton used right, to— Right, we had Barton Cable And Vision. the thing is, is that, see, a lot of times people don't understand that you need to not only lease the land, you need to own the land. So you can lease and have businesses downtown— and be in an office or a building, and you just lease the property, it don't belong to you. It's not yours. You are leasing that. So that's why a lot of places went down. Bomax went down. They were leasing. Mm. Mahogany went down. They were leasing. So had to be very, you know, I don't know if, in fact, that's what Burt does, but I'm just saying you have to make sure that you're not leasing land. Because when I ran for city council, that was my big thing back then. What, six years ago? I don't know how many years ago. Seven years ago now. Is that, come on, y'all, tell me and help me understand why we don't have any black businesses downtown. Well, we need to own the land. Thank you so much. That's it. We need to own the building. That's it. We need to own our product line. Hello. And we need to employ people. It's Mm -hmm. not enough to be a business owner and you don't have employees. An employee. Those (laughs) 90,000 black businesses each employed five people. Think about how many jobs that would create. Oh, my. Right. Mm-hmm. And so that's the kind of. But see, that discussion is not in the media. Our, our leadership's not talking about how they can expand and help black business owners expand. Mm-hmm. How do we take TV 33 and expand the studio? Because they think we're still right? trying to go for that black thing. But you know what? I'm so sick of people saying, you know what? Y'all always making it a black thing. But you know what? It is a black thing. Well, Dan Gilbert thing is a Dan Gilbert thing. How come Orthea <laughs> Barnes thing can't be an Orthea Barnes thing? Right. I mean, right. I mean, I don't understand it. I don't either. I don't get it, right? I don't either. And people always say, well, you got too much. You're greedy. You had too much. This man got six buildings, a casino, Quicken Loans, Cleveland Cavaliers, and all kind of stuff. And people say, give and them some more. still not through. And people say, give them some more, right? But as soon as, we, as soon as we say, hey, we need investment. Village too. And people say, give them some more, mm-hmm. right? And the state of Michigan, through the, through the DDA, is helping the Olympia Entertainment See, Complex come to Detroit. See, my thing is, I'm not, I'm not mad because you got something. I'm mad because we don't have nothing. But how come they can have and whatever they want, but as soon as we start talking about what we want, mm-hmm. somehow we racist. Right. Well, you racist. You right. want too much. You greedy. Something wrong. With, well, why is something wrong with me? Right? I mean, if this is America, right. the playing field ought to be even. Equal. Right? Mm-hmm. We ought to have access to the same resources. We ought to be able to get the same 0% interest loans over 30 years for our business. Right. What you think? Give me a call here. 313-868-4336. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back with more. Don't leave because there's some more good stuff coming up and coming your way. Some things that you need to know about. Be right back. Oh, we're back, and we're just—I'm just gossiping over here, and we're back. 
back with Pastor Bullock, Operation Push, also NAACP, uh, Rainbow Push, Operation, I'm so used to saying because that's, that's old time, a long time ago, it used to be just Operation Push. And now it's Rainbow Push, Detroit Rainbow Push. And there's a new man in the office right now. And you said his name was? John Graves is, is new oh, leadership know there. You know John Graves. And I know Reverend Holly's working with them. Okay. Because we're focusing on our city council campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, but we're still working with the people, working uh, with the Change Agent Consortium and Pastor Maurice Ruz, working with Reverend Charles Williams mm -hmm. and the National Action Network. We're just here to serve the people. Uh, but we can't do it by ourselves. That's you know? it. Have you seen... Us go, you know, a lot of times you can go two or three steps forward and maybe six steps backwards. What is going on with that? Is that happening or am I just imagining? You know what? I hate to say it, but Minister Louis Farrakhan at one of Tavis Smiley's State of the Black uh, Union, mm -hmm. uh, he stood up and gave a speech that I never will forget. And he said, you know what? The problem with black America mm -hmm. is its leadership. Well... <laughs> And, we know that. <laughs> and I'm going to be honest with you. We we have taken some steps backward, mm -hmm. but we have to lay that at the feet of the people who've been in charge over the last 40 years. Mm -hmm. I mean, we have, ha we have had a very, very stable. Not just the last couple of years. A very stable local <clears throat> and national leadership for at least the last 30 years, mm -hmm. political, economic, and cultural. Mm -hmm. And once they got in the door, it seemed like they shut the door behind them. Mm -hmm. we, they didn't create pathways and training opportunities so that the next generations could reduplicate their success. See, our community, for some reason, has this I got mine, you got to get yours mentality, mm. as opposed to this is how I did it. Now, I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, do better than me. Go mm -hmm. beyond me. And so and so we have politicians that stay in that office for 40 years. That used to be the years. word for us. Coming up, coming up as kids, I know with my coming up, it was that way. You know, you got to do better than I did. Used to be. Hello? Now it's now the, now they say it's wait your turn. It's all about me. Now they say wait your turn, right? So you got people who uh, are successful in business, and instead of showing you how to be successful in business, mm -hmm. right? They 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 try to block you from being successful. And in see, business. I'm one of those that even in, even in pastoring, I'm one of those that. I got to show you how to make some money so you can bring me some money. Well, you can't pastor can't, a church. And you don't have no tithe to bring? Of prayer. How, how can I do that? Now, you can have a prayer it. meeting with prayer, mm -hmm. but you're going to be praying outside. Right. Right. <laughs> you're going to be tabernacle and show up. That is so up. true. Right. You know, Pastor Bullock, there is so much. I always say when he comes, I need two or three hours with him. So, but I do want to know. What are some of the things that we need to be looking for that might be coming our way that will slap us if we're not aware that it's coming? Well, one, we need to fight back against this emergency manager. Meet me tomorrow at 10 a.m. to come in a young municipal building. Uh, uh, the emergency manager is a big piece. There's a EAA. Public education is being destroyed in Detroit. We need to fight back and mobilize against that. I'd love to come back Hold and that. talk we more gotta about th this. We got a call. Hello. 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 Uh-uh, turn your TV down. Can you hear me? Turn your TV down. Or You're in the echo chamber. Turn it down. I can't hear you. You're too loud. If they turn it off, then I won't be able to hear them. Can you turn your TV off or turn it down? Are you still there? Okay, you're still too loud. You sound like you're in the bathroom. <laughs> okay, I'm going to have to lose you. I'm going to have to hang up on you because I can't hear you and understand anything you say. No, no, that's not better, honey. Yeah, I can hear you, but it's too loud. It's not making sense. We don't understand what you're saying. All right, honey. Mm. Yeah, she can call back. I don't know. Sound like she was. Yeah, in call a, back again. In, a, in an echo chamber. And uh, make sure that you don't sound like you're in an echo chamber. Turn your TV down or either turn it off. All right, three one three eight six eight four three three six. Now we were talking about some of the things that we need to be alert to, and I know you said to come for the emergency 
uh, meeting tomorrow. Right, right. Anything else that we need to be Public alert to? Public education. Look out for the EAA, the Educational Achievement Authority. Okay. Yeah, they are experimenting with our children, and it's not helping, it's hurting. We need to be on guard for that. But look, go to my Facebook page. Okay. I post stuff all the time. D. Alexander Bullock, D. Alexander Bullock on Facebook. Go to Change Agent Consortium. Pastor Rudd's. That's and that on Facebook organization too, right? is on Facebook, Change Agent Consortium. And Posting Action Network updates. is on Go there to National too. Action Network as well. They're all on Facebook, and you can get updates. And I'd love to uh, maybe be able to come back and talk about some other things that are going on. There's some positive things going on, too. And that's what we need to make yeah. sure that we interject a lot because people get so discouraged. So right. We need something to pump them up. Now, one of the things that I don't think people know and we need to look out for is our tax situation and what's going to happen with that. That's right. That's right. Okay. That's right. And I got a young lady that's going to be talking with us about that in our next segment. So I'm not going to hold you because I know you got to make some runs and got to go. I appreciate you. Thank you. I appreciate you. I love you. you. I love you. God bless God you. God bless you. And we'll be right back. Don't go away. We are back. We are back. I'm not going to let y'all catch me off this time. We're so glad to pass the Pastor Bullock stop by. And I'm making sure that we know everything that these people are trying to do to us. There's some lot of things going on. If you know something that we don't know, give us a call here. Somebody needs to know what you might know. 313-868-4336. 868-4336. Three, six. Let me say this before I talk with the next young lady about the tax situation and what they're getting ready to do to us involving taxes. Is that I'd like to thank Rochelle Jamil for beating our face and making our face look good on TV, doing our makeup. I love her dearly and thank God for her. And if you need your makeup done, give her a call 313 863 1963. 313 863 1963. Thank you, Rochelle Jamil. And now a young lady that does taxes and actually she comes from a legacy of, of taxes in terms of her parents having the business first. But now she's in business. Miss Crystal, you know, Crystal, I could never think of your last name. Foster. Crystal Foster. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, I know it now because you said it. Yeah. <laughs> How you doing? I'm good. I'm good. Thank yeah, you. I come um, my Family's business is Precise Income Tax. Mm -hmm. uh, they have an office on the east side of Detroit, and they have an office on the west side. They've been doing taxes probably about 15 years or so. Okay. Before that, they've had a couple of other businesses in the city of Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I kind of grew up with it. Um, I came today. Obviously, today is tax day. Yes, it the tax is. Y'all be ready to put your taxes <laughs> in the mail. Yeah. Is that what the time it is to drop yes. it in the mail? Yes. If you owe, you must file by today to avoid penalties um, and interest. If you file by today, and then you you know you mail off your payment. And if you can't file by by today, you can, who do you call to get extension? So you would call um, either your tax preparer, or you can call us. Um, our number is three one three two seven two twenty two hundred. Um, it's Say three it one three. 272 2200 mm -hmm. and um we're located on mac nichols and uh schaefer 
off of Freeland. So now right you by- said you had one on the east side and one on the west side too? Yes, we do. Okay. Um, the one on the east side is currently, we're just operating out of one office this year. Okay. So, but we, we do, um, we do do a courier service right now for east side clients. So if you can't make it or if you're at home and for whatever reason you're not able to make it to our office, we do do carrier service. We will pick up your stuff and come back with it. Mm-hmm. Um, this, why I came today, because right. it's tax deadline, but the city of Detroit's tax deadline is April 30th. You must file their taxes by April 30th. But what we have noticed since we're talking about mm-hmm. the east side is a lot of our east side clients are coming with letters from the city of Detroit for over claiming that they haven't paid taxes for the past 10 years. A lot oh, of my, time, my, my, my. A lot of that. So now is that true or not true? See, that's actually not true. Okay. It's it's a little like, how do I say, um, playing with words. That's mm. what I'm saying. Because a lot of times these people have paid their taxes in while they're working their job, but maybe they forgot to mail them off on April 30th. Okay. So... Um, they have to get back with their tax preparer and um, file them with the city of Detroit because what the city of Detroit is... What about those that try and do their own? Okay, that's the same thing. You should go back through your records and find them. If you can't, then you need to prepare them Mm -hmm. for those years. Um, If you do them on your own... That's a whole lot of years to say all of a sudden, say you haven't... Paid? Is that what yes, you're saying? Yes, and it's resulting in th- people owing thousands of dollars. Right, right. Um, Because they're adding interest and they're adding penalties to them. So one of the big morals of the stories is please, you must, you must, you must mail off your Detroit City tax returns. By the 31st, is that what By you're saying? By the 30th. By the 30th. Yeah, you have until April 30th. 30th of April. Mm-hmm, to okay. mail those off um, and to have them filed. But also, if you do get those letters, it may res- you may be able to minimize the amount of money that you owe. And how do you, you minimize? If you owe anything. Because a lot of times, um, by filing them, mm-hmm. even if you didn't file them or you didn't send them off, um, a lot so of So what do you do? Take the paper and go back down to the tax division at, yeah, in yeah. the city of Detroit building? Yes, with those years. Um, because a lot of times people are paying them through their job. You oh, pay your okay. you pay your city of Detroit taxes through your job, but the city of Detroit. So when you mean you t- pay it through your job, take it out of your, your they're check? They're taking it out of your paycheck. Okay. Yes, um, for some, but for some jobs, and for some jobs they do not take it out for the city. Okay. And you have to go to them and ask and request that. And if, sometimes that can be bad when they don't because you forget. Yes, and then the and year you comes. don't pay it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know that's like being self-employed. Mm-hmm. And making sure that I put some money aside every week right. for taxes, so when tax time come, mm-hmm. I got some of the money, if not all the money, yes. to give my tax to pay my taxes back. Cause I have never understood why people that own businesses pay or independent pay more taxes mm-hmm. than those that are employed. I don't get that. Help me understand that. People who are self-employed, maybe. Mm-hmm. Because they're also paying their employer's Social Security and Medicare tax along Ooh. with their own self-employment tax. So okay. when I'm when you're my um, let's say you're my employee, mm-hmm. you pay your half of your Social Security and Medicare tax. I pay your other half of your Social Security and Medicare. tax, OK. Along with any other benefits I give you. If I give you a 401k, I have to match that. Mm-hmm. If I um, if I give you medical Depending on the medical plan that you use, I may also have to pay into that. It is so much you really need to know and have to know. Yes. When it comes to taxes and understanding. Yes. Questions out there, give us a call. 313-868-4336. Not unless you know everything there is to know about taxes (laughs) and ready to put your your, uh, thing in the mail today. If not, give us a call. Mm -hmm. Now... Uh, I think I know it's an imp- unfair situation, mm-hmm. but I don't think it'll ever be anything we can do about that. I think that's the way it's going to be from here on out. You think? I don't know. I mean, with the new emergency manager, maybe he may decide that there's an easier way to collect taxes from individuals and get rid of the individual. Well, I know one of the things that 
uh, Snyder did say that he was going to put some kind of taxes on us because of the the holes in the road and the road repair. Mm -hmm. So that tax will be coming. Mm -hmm. It's always something coming in terms of taxes Mm -hmm. that we have to be alert to and know what's going on. Yeah, and you always just want to be as much on top of it as you can. That's Mm -hmm. why even if you prepare taxes yourself or you have a prepare, a lot of times what will happen is people will get letters and they don't reach out to their prepare. Okay. We always say at our office, call us. You get a mm-hmm. letter, call us. Mm-hmm. They want something from you. Because a lot of times people are like, oh, that person must be blah, blah, blah. But there's, you know, we're really there to help and mediate a lot of those situations. Like um, we know and we try to warn our clients as much as we can about when things are coming up. So we've reached out to the East Side Line and say, hey, you mm-hmm. know, we know there's an audit right now. If you need us. Call us. If you so need now to get how that does that audit, what does that audit have to do with us that live in the city? So the audit, basically, that's who they're targeting. I haven't seen it where they're targeting, and I could be wrong about this because mm-hmm. I only know from the cases that we see. So um, from what we see, it's mostly people who work in the city who work jobs because that's the information that they have access to through the IRS database. Mm-hmm. See, another harder part about the tax system for Detroit is is that um, they only know that you received income during those years. If you didn't file your city of Detroit taxes, mm-hmm. they don't know from your job if you paid them in. Now, you know what? A lot of people don't file their city. Mm-hmm. They figure that if, that if I file my state, I've done everything I need to do. No, but you must file your city. True, Yes, true. yes. And then, um, obviously, this today you have to file your federal. Okay. which is the 15th, and you have to file your state. Mm-hmm. That also has to be done. Um, I wanted to talk about um, people who do self, self-returns, self mm-hmm. some common errors that can happen, Okay, which is you want to double-check your addresses, make sure all your addresses are right. Now, when you say all your addresses, what mm-hmm. do you mean by that? On your, like, your 1040 forms. And make sure on they your... complement all those different forms mm-hmm. that you do. Yes. Okay. Because... Um, Especially if that's where you're mailing, because mm-hmm. it says at the top of the 1040 that that's your mailing address. So make sure that that's where you want to you want them to receive inf- you want to receive information from, and you want to um, give Im- give information from that same address. Mm-hmm. Another common one is making sure you have all the social security numbers right. So that means yourself. Your and spouse. your spouse, any dependents that you have, mm-hmm. you want to make sure that those names and those social security numbers are correct because they are going to match them. Okay. If you're mailing it off or if you're filing it electronically. Um, something that's very, very important that is very easy to do is double checking your routing numbers if you're getting a refund. Now, what are routing numbers? I'm That's... <laughs> Hello. Okay. <laughs> so you want to make sure that your routing and your account number of the bank account. Oh, you mean for the bank account mm-hmm. routing number? Mm-hmm. Okay, I got you. You want to make sure that those bank account routing numbers are right and those bank account account numbers are right. Um, IRS is good at if something's wrong with those or if they get deposited in the want the wrong one, mm-hmm. that they will usually the banks will kick it back and then it's mailed to you. But from what I've seen, that's what's happened when those kind of errors have happened. Mm-hmm. But you just you don't want to have to deal with that extra headache. You want to make sure that those things are right. Um, a lot of times people at the end of the tax season, they like to check their tax re- um, returns because I know s- there's been cases where preparers have put their own routing numbers and bank account numbers. Oh, wow. On there. So now this is what I will say about that. Is that legal? I oh, I'm she's not a lawyer. thinking about it. <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a lawyer. So okay, that's that's <laughs> one thing I want you to check I'm out for us. Not a lawyer because we're so. gonna have you come back, so okay. you have to check that out okay. for us. But what I was gonna say is because this is often what happens too is you mm-hmm. have to be careful about um careful about that. Let's say they did prepare your return, but you got a bank, what we call a bank product, which means maybe you're having your re- your refund, you're having prepare fees come out of your refund. Mm-hmm. So that first 1040 form is going to have the product, the bank product's number that you agreed to. 
that's going to have that routing number on mm -hmm. there. So don't call your preparer and start yelling that you're taking their money because that could be the actual bank, the bank's routing number to the product, bank product that you agreed to so that your money, can so be, that your tax preparer fees can be, can be taken out. Yeah, it could be mm -hmm. paid for. But what you're going to want to do then is look at the bank product that you, bank application product that you signed. And you're there gonna, is so much to think and about, gonna, my Yeah, and you're going to want to make sure that those routing numbers are the correct numbers. Mm. Yes, but that's why we're here. We're here to help and make sure. Now, I may people. ask a stupid question, but oh, what about those that are on Medicare, Medicaid, or welfare mm -hmm. in terms of, let's go back, no, let's say Medicare, uh, not Social Security. Social Security, uh-huh. They get, you know, their checks and all that. Mm -hmm. Uh, what do they have to do in terms of tax time, or do they? It depends. Okay, depends on what? <laughs> a lot of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's a big it depends because if you receive only Social Security, mm -hmm. you may want to file for your state so that you can get your property tax credit, which usually is a payable refund to you. Okay. Um, If you receive Social Security and have income, Mm-hmm. Now, when I say income, that could be retirement income or business income, then you could be required to file. Okay, and you have to make sure that you do yes. file according to how much you make. Yes, yes. As, and we do seniors at a discounted rate if it's only their Social Security. Okay. So you're not paying the whole fee. Mm -hmm. um, so that's why I was like, it depends <laughs> on okay. really the situation. Okay. So even though you're retired, you still may want to file so that you can be receiving a state refund or um, you may actually be required to file because you're getting retirement income. Mm -hmm. So. Because um, I often wondered about those that, you know, mm -hmm. they don't get that much money. So mm -hmm. do we take money from them as well? And I'm, I'm well, thinking you are paying your property tax. So you do okay. get a property tax credit. Mm -hmm. Now they have reduced the property tax credit this year. So okay. for people who are making larger incomes. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, but it just, it really is a big, that's a big, it depends for um, seniors. Hmm. And then um, for people who receive what we call like non-federal taxable income, mm -hmm. and they're maybe paying, um, and they're thinking about their state, that's also, it depends. Okay. And it's best to just talk to a preparer about that. And your number again for information and getting my sure. things done or even because right now if they don't have it done, mm -hmm. what they're going to end up doing is calling you to do an extension, right? Yes. Or do you do that? Yes, yes. Okay. Um, For some, we will. you have to have all your information with you because a lot of people don't know that. They think you can just, it's just a, you call now, what, me up. Now, what is all your information? What do I need when I come to you? Okay. What I need so to bring to you? So you need to have all your income information. You have to have any sort of what we call deductions. So um, if you have dependents, if you own a home, we need your property tax um, bill, mortgage interest statements, mm. um, anything. So if I, I'm new with this, so if I come to you, I will is there give a you pamphlet a that, yes. or something yes. that says this is what you need to go yes. home and bring back? Yes. Okay. Yes. All we right. do. We do have a checkoff list that you can come in and you can get and you can Check those things off. Mm -hmm. Do you have um, a website with that information as well? No, we don't have a website. Okay. Um, the, oh, what was I going to say? There was something important. Oh, so when you're filing an extension, we need all that information. Because a lot of times there's a misperception that you can call us up and say, hey, file an extension for me. Mm -hmm. That's not really true. And why? Because... In order for us to prepare a, an extension, we've almost had to complete your whole return. Okay. So it's not what people think when they say, I want to file an extension, call me up, fill out a form and file an extension. Mm -hmm. We have to have all that information so that we can send something off. Really, extensions are for if there's something wrong with your W-2 and you just realize, or there's something wrong for your 1099 and you just realize. IRS doesn't really like so it's not it's not that I've been there. sick or I've had too much to do and I couldn't get to it. It's not yes. that. Yes, it's not. <laughs> no. No. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We have a question over here. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Oh. 
No, you're good. Hey, hey, it's a good day. And we're talking about today, the big day, the big, big number day, the big tax day is today. And we were talking about some of the things that we don't know about taxes. And I see that the lines have not lit up. So y'all must know everything there is to know. Don't call me later. Talking about Orthea, what did she say about this? 313-868-4336. One of the questions that was asked is that the preparer did some taxes for a young lady and come to find out they didn't prepare the taxes the right way and she owed some money and she's a retired person. So what did she do with that? Or did did you understand her to say that? Or Yeah, that's what okay. I understood it. Um so the best thing to do is probably to reach out to another preparer. Mm-hmm. Um you can also reach out to IRS, and IRS actually also has what they call taxpayer advocates. Um, and you can call 1 800 829 1040, 1 800 829 1040, and ask them for the number for the tax advocates. But um, I would reach out if, if it was me in that situation, mm-hmm. I would first reach out to another preparer because, from, uh, from what I understand, the preparer who prepared the taxes is now passed away. Okay. So. I always say first go back to the person who prepared them. Um, then if you're not satisfied with that, their answer. And then, then the person is passed away too. So. Right. Then go to another prepare. Bring all of those returns with you and see what happened. Mm-hmm. Um, and then from there, what will have to happen is, so you bring all your 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 returns, and you're also going to want to bring the letter that IRS sent to you. Okay. Um, a lot of times people don't know if IRS sends you a letter, you're better off going to going back to that preparer, especially with us. And we do this, by the way, we do a lot of those correspondence. We do them for free. A lot of other mm-hmm. places, once you get a correspondent, they still want you to pay for that time. Mm-hmm. But if you prepared your return with us and you have some correspondence that you need answered, Always come back to us, and we're we're there to help you. Mm-hmm. Um, the but be nice about it. <laughs> I know a okay. lot of times people are like <laughs> they get stressed, and then they're like they're like stressing us, and it's like right because they make right, it but, seem like it's your fault. Right. Well, and you know, don't make it seem like it's our fault. <laughs> and, in that, <laughs> and you know, there's that whole because when you prepare, we're here to assist, but really your returns are considered self prepared even if your preparer is preparing them for you. Mm. IRS has been trying to change some of the wording with that, and there's a lot of legal battles going on right now mm-hmm. about that. So, um, but I won't get into that. So um, there's, as it stands right now, even though someone may assist you to return, prepare your taxes, you are still personally responsible for them. Mm. So, okay. um I would go to another preparer and I would see exactly what happened. If nothing can be done, there are still options for you. Let's say, for example, they were prepared wrong. And in this situation, let's say, for example, they were prepared wrong. Mm -hmm. We will try to either amend them to make them right. But in a case where maybe you received more money than you should have received, you may have to pay that money back. Okay. Now, depending on your situation, we can then give you options from there. We can either help you set up a payment plan with IRS. Um, If setting up a payment plan isn't something that is feasible for you, 
maybe you'll have to do what we call it, what IRS calls an offer, an offer and compromise, mm -hmm. because maybe you can't pay the, you can't afford to pay the, the actual bill. Okay. So um, give us an example of what the offer and compromise looks like. It's a long and tedious process. <laughs> so, um, yeah. So, so if I owe thousands. If you owe thousands, it's worth it. Okay. To do it. Mm -hmm. But it means getting all your financial information, us filling it in, a lot of back and forth correspondence with IRS. Okay. Um, to see if they will do an offer on compromise. They don't have to, but this is this is sort of like you asking, requesting an offer and compromise. There are so, so many questions that I want to ask in my mind and my thought. Okay. Uh, is it fair to say that you need to start preparing tomorrow, getting everything ready for next year yes. in terms of taxes? Yes. And not waiting. Many people wait until the month before. Yes. Or even the week before. I mean, yes. it's really not a good thing. Okay, so this is how I break it down in mm -hmm. my head. If you're a business owner, you should be getting it done. You should be getting your records and everything recorded at least twice a week. If you can't do twice a week, at least once a month. If you can't do once a month, at now, least once a quarter. Now, when you say get them recorded, does that mean you do the recording? or? Yeah, you should have a book um, bookkeeper. Bookkeeping fees aren't really that expensive. Um, we offer bookkeeping fees at $50 a month for a basic service. Mm -hmm. um, your first service fee is um, $25. Um, but you want to have all that information recorded because when you're in business, you know, you're going like this, you're going all around. If you're an individual, now this is kind of interesting is depending on the type of individual you are, if you're an individual with a family, you want to keep records, your medical, any medical bills that you're paying or anything like that. Mm -hmm. You want to start keeping all those things in a folder. So you may want to do that once a month, making sure if, even if you're driving to back and forth to the doctors, um, any sort of repairs that you make on your house okay, or anything like that. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're a single individual, I actually say that you should be talking to a preparer to plan for a better refund for the following year. And a lot of single people don't know that because single people are taxed the highest and they're taxed the most because mm. they don't get as many favorable tax breaks. Okay. So, um, you want to, oh, and also if you're having children that are going to be aging out, if they're around that 18 year, year mark, mm -hmm. you want to call your preparer and ask as them. As a single parent. As a single parent. You okay. may want to call them and say, hey, do I need to change my exemption, my uh, my exemptions on my job? And when I say my exemptions is uh, maybe I'm doing single, maybe I'm doing married and two, but I have a kid who's 18 and they're not going to college. Mm hmm so I may want to change that to married in one so that I don't have a bill the following year or, you know, things like that. So um, much, so much, so much, so mm -hmm. much to know <laughs> until we can't all can't know it all in this one show. Yes. So I'm going to have to have you come back again mm -hmm. because uh, there are some things that need to be talked about that can lead up to next year. Mm -hmm. It's not like we got to wait till the time of the season. Yes. So I appreciate you giving us this time. No, I appreciate you having me. Thank, Thank you. you. And I will have you back on our show, okay? Okay. I appreciate all of you out there for listening in today. Thank you, Sean. Thank you to my daughter, Giselle. Thank you, Rochelle Jamil. Thank you, Henry Tyler, RJ Watkins, and all our listening audience, Facebook family, all the way to Japan. We love you out there. And I know you love us because you always inboxing us on Facebook and letting us know that you love us and that you're watching. See you the next time.